Session 279 Chapter 2 Verse 255 A Continuation Allah, there is no God but Him, the ever-living, the ever-watchful. Neither drowsiness nor sleep overtakes Him. All that is in the heavens and in the earth belongs to Him. Who is there that can intercede with Him except by His leave? He knows what is before them and what is behind them, but they do not comprehend any of His knowledge except what He wills. His seat encompasses the heavens and the earth. It does not weary Him to preserve them both. He is the Most High, the Tremendous. Chapter 2, verse 255 We begin with the phrase, He knows what is before them and what is behind them. Scholars explain this phrase from different angles. Let's look at a couple of explanations. Usually, you can see what is before you or in front of you, and you are not aware of what is behind you. In other words, God knows what we know, and He knows what we do not know. Others explain that what is before them refers to the future, while what is behind them refers to the past. So God knows the past and the future. We answer that God knows all. He knows what we know and what we do not. He knows what is in our world and what is beyond our world. And He knows the past, present, and future. He says, He has the keys to the unseen. No one knows them but Him. He knows all that is in the land and sea. No leaf falls without His knowledge, nor is there a single grain in the darkness of the earth, or anything, fresh or withered, that is not written in a clear record. Chapter 6, verse 59 God's knowledge is comprehensive and complete, while our knowledge is limited and deficient. In fact, we cannot even imagine the vastness of God's knowledge, because if we understood how vast His knowledge is, it means that His knowledge has limits. He says, But they do not comprehend any of His knowledge except what He wills. Let's look at the sources of our knowledge. First, we can research and draw conclusions. For example, a student who is given a math problem can use the information in the problem and his or her prior knowledge to reach the answer. Scientists can use the information they already know, plus the materials in the lab, to run experiments and learn something new. Even this type of knowledge falls under the rule, but they do not comprehend any of his knowledge except what he wills. Another source of knowledge is gifts from God. How, you may ask? We answer that Allah has set a preordained birth date or reveal date for every piece of knowledge given to humanity. Just like each one of us has a set birthday, each piece of knowledge has a set birthday. Sometimes, this birthday coincides with scientists researching and exploring. Other times, the birthday of a certain piece of knowledge falls during a time when no one is looking. This is when scientists trip over a great discovery by chance. In fact, most of humanity's major discoveries happened by chance. Let's look at a few examples. The discovery of penicillin, one of the world's first antibiotics and a turning point in human history, happened by pure chance. In September of 1928, Dr. Alexander Fleming, a bacteriologist, returned from a summer vacation to a very messy lab bench. Upon examining some bacterial colonies, Dr. Fleming noted that a mold called Penicillium notatum had contaminated his petri dishes. He was amazed to find that this particular mold prevented normal bacterial growth. Here are Dr. Fleming's own words in his journal. When I woke up just after dawn on September 28, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionize all medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic, or bacteria killer but I guess that was exactly what I did. There are countless other stories of accidental discoveries. Medical x-rays, plastics, heart pacemakers, cooking with microwaves, and much more. God holds all the knowledge of the unknown, and He gives humanity, by research or by chance, a few gems.
He says, We will show them our signs in every region of the earth and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. Is it not enough that your Lord witnesses everything? Chapter 41, verse 53. The revelation of knowledge and secrets of the unseen are not limited to science. Allah, the most generous, also gives from his knowledge and blessings to his close servants who excel in devotion. He says, He is the one who knows the unseen and does not divulge his unseen to anyone except a messenger with whom he is well pleased, and then he posts sentinels before him and behind him. Chapter 72 Verses 26 and 27. More importantly, Allah holds all the keys to His knowledge. He may grant us knowledge now and then, even if we are not actively looking, but He does not grant the master key to anyone. God says, He has the keys to the unseen. No one knows them but Him. He knows all that is in the land and sea. No leaf falls without His knowledge nor is there a single grain in the darkness of the earth or anything, fresh or withered, that is not written in a clear record. Chapter 6, verse 59 The word any in the phrase they do not comprehend any of his knowledge except what he wills refers to even the smallest and most trivial pieces of knowledge. Indeed, God has control over everything. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Convey my teachings to the people, even if it is only a single verse. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qurangarden.com.